Hey, Christy here with Make Everyday Colorful, and today's video, I wanted to give y'all some book recommendations, picture books that uh, my kids enjoy, and I'm going to go from a range of about two to six-year-olds. Love these picture books, but I'm going to start off with the um, ones that my, two, my younger child, my two-year-old really loves, but even my older daughters, which my oldest is five, they still will sit through all of these books. So I wanted to give y'all some good picture book ideas that you could buy that would be great gifts or just great reading time with your children and i have hundreds and hundreds of kids books so it was really hard for me to narrow this down but i wanted to show you some of our favorites just to give you an idea of what to buy if you don't know what to buy or where to start with your little home library for your young children so i'm just going to start it off and some of these books are in collections so i can't show you every single book that i have like through and through because it would literally take I don't know probably over an hour so i'm just gonna start off with some of my favorites so one of my favorites that my children have always really enjoyed is go dog go this book teaches um like it's it's a rhyming book of course a lot of the dr seuss ones are but this like um color recognition and different things like that um let's see what else like oh stop and go in and out different things like that see like one dog in three red dogs come out over under see up down so this is a really great picture book it's very colorful my children love this book they have always loved this book i can't tell you how many times i have read this book go doll go highly recommend it Another set that my kids really love, and like I said, even my five-year-olds still sit here and listen to these books and want to be read, but um, I'm just going to say this might be, if you're looking for stuff for like a two-year-old, maybe even a one-year-old, one these are a really great little series. This is um, some Usborne books. How to Brush Your Teeth with Snappy Croc. How to Feed Your Cheeky Monkey. How to Bathe Little Dinosaur, and How to Tuck in Your Sleepy Lion. So in these books, they have the animal, whatever it's about. So this one's a lion. So the little lion doesn't want to go to bed, and it talks about what they're doing to get him tucked into bed, like reading a story and snuggling, and all of them are like that. So Little Dinosaur doesn't want to take a bath, and they run the bath water. Very colorful, very sturdy board books that little kids really like so highly recommend these also for little kids this book and my like i said my daughters still love me to read this and my oldest is five and they still love it this is actually a collection of dr seuss books my big book of beginner books about me and this has like the eye book the foot book the ear book the knee book the tooth book and the nose book and it's just silly little books with a lot of colorful pictures of course and it talks about like the nose. Why do you need your nose? How would it be if you didn't have a nose? Imagine if you had a big nose or a small nose, you know, and then the tooth book and it talks about your teeth, you know, and how these don't have teeth and they can never smile. Oh, this one's the knee book, how they can jump and all this. So it's a really cute little con uh, con collection of books in here. And this book's about me. Another book, uh, we got this for one of my daughter's birthdays, probably like two years ago. My kids love this book, Crunch the Shy Dinosaur. And this is like a, a book where your kids have to be interactive with this book. It's like, dude, this is Crunch. And he's a shy dinosaur. You have to say hello. So you say hello. Oh, no, you startled him. And so you have to say it quieter. And it, it just goes through the whole book. You have to do stuff for Crunch the Dinosaur. And he's a shy dinosaur. And so your kids have to be involved in this book and say different things to get the dinosaur to do what you need him to do. So I really recommend that book. I probably read it like four times last week already. And we've had it for two years. So just, you know, and that my three-year-old is really in love with that book right now. This one, of course, Curious George. Everybody knows who Curious George is. Always great picture book. My two, I think it depends on the kid. My two year old will sit through these, but he really likes it. So I think this is one of those you might would have to be about three or older, but it really just depends on the child. But uh, I really do love the Curious George books. So, of course, I'm recommending. And when you're buying Curious George, make sure you're getting the ones by Margaret and H.A. Ray. 
a lot of the newer carrier storage books are not written by them so it's not quite the same so these are the ones you want to get okay um this is a little um lift the flat book called dear zoo it's just a cute little book and my books are very worn and used you can tell but uh, the little boy write, or I'll say little boy, little kid writes the pet of uh, the zoo a letter asking for a pet and every pet they send him doesn't work out for one reason or another. Like the camel was too grumpy, you know, so I sent him back and you just go through the book until you get to the last page, which is a puppy dog. And like I tell you, you can tell my books been well loved and I kept him. So it's a, li a cute little book. Um, let me see. I'm going to show you these. So, and I have more of these. This is, um, how do dinosaurs eat their food? How do dinosaurs get well soon? And how do dinosaurs say goodnight? Again, well-loved books here. And it always shows, and it shows like, does a dinosaur, um, I'm just going to try and find one of the pages to show you. Does this dinosaur shout, I want to hear one book more. So the dino all the little dinosaurs are, you know, pitching kind of a little tantrum about why they shouldn't go to bed. And then it flips over and says, and then, you know, the second half of the book, no, dinosaurs don't do, do that. They give a big hug and one kiss more, you know. So the it's showing kids kind of like how they should be acting, I guess you say, when you're putting them to bed or when they're sick or, you know, whenever they're eating their food. So... These are just some cute picture books with dinosaurs and my kids love dinosaurs. So that's why we got these books. Let me see. This one is Nibbles. Nibbles is also by Usborn. Um, I have friends that are consultants for Usborn. I'm going to put some links for all of the books I'm showing you in there. But these little nibble books are so cute. This little nibbly monster likes to nibble books and so throughout the book so he's in a cage and then he gets out and he likes to nibble things and you'll see throughout the book like he nibbles oh no he's going he nibbled his way into the book can you find him and in this one he messes up the character stories and his stories you'll know like um Goldilocks and the Three Bears, Little Red Riding Hood, and it talks about how he messed up their stories by nibbling into their books and Jack and the Beanstalk. So he's messing up all these character stories, and you gotta try, we gotta try and catch him before he does it and destroys any more stories. And so Nibbles has nibbled into another book, Nibbles the Dinosaur Guide, and this one. Nibbles is um, in a book about dinosaurs and it's dangerous because, you know, he can get hurt by one of the dinosaurs. So it shows him going into there. So he's in the Triceratops chapter and they're going to charge. They're going to go after him because they don't want him. He's ruining their story. This is supposed to be about them. Oh, no, he's escaped. And you see the holes in the book? Countless, countless, countless times I have read these Nibble books, okay? See, he keeps getting into different chapters. And it gives you little facts about the dinosaurs, too. Like uh, the Velociraptor's six-foot length and a carnivore, and, you know, just different things like that. So Nibbles goes through this dinosaur book. And you'll just have to see what happens in the end with T-Rex. Okay, I'm trying to see. What other one I want to show you for the younger ones up to, let's say, five or so. This book... I highly, highly, highly recommend. I've actually done an entire video on this book alone, and I will link it below. This HarperCollins Treasury of Picture Book Classics, I'm just going to say it's a must, okay? They have so many good stories in here. Like, um, let's see, Pizza Pizza, Caps for Sale, Eric Carle, um, From Head to Toe, Good Night Moon, Harold and the Purple Crayon. And then they have Baby Says, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, Leo the Late Bloomer, William's Doll, George Shrinks, Critter, and A Baby Sister for Francis. These books, I mean, it's a big book. And it has all the colorful pictures. This is Leo the Late Bloomer. I'm, I can't tell you how many times I've read this book. I feel like I've read stories in this book like a hundred times. Give a Mouse a Cookie. I'm going to link the, my video below. You need this book. If you have young kids, you need this book. My kids absolutely love this book. I probably still read stories out of here. We've had it for 
over two years and I bet you I read stories out of this book still every single week and it just depends on whatever they want to read that day. Sometimes we'll sit and read several of the stories in a row. Love that book. Okay, so that I'm going to say if you have a child that's, I'm going to say even maybe even one, one to two or three, the books I just showed are great. Now, for getting a little bit older, um, I'm going to show you some books that maybe I would say maybe three and up. Your two, if you have a two-year-old that really loves reading, they might be able to sit through some of these, but definitely like three and up. Okay, this Maple Hill form, this one is Maple Hill, it's, it's Our Animal Friends. And then I have the A Year at Maple Hill form. My kids really love this these books, okay? And this one, it shows the different animals on Maple Hill form. And it tells you a little bit about all the animals. So there's like you know goats and sheep and cats and dogs and chickens and it tells you about their little personality so it's a really cute little book okay and it kind of leads into the next one the um a year at maple hill form and this is kind of like what's going on during that year with the animals uh, again this is another book um I've had to read many times for a while I just sat in my daughter's bedroom upstairs and I read it to them every single night I kind of had to sneak it out of there because I almost got, I mean, I love the book. Don't get me wrong. But it was like, I want to change and read something else. So they really love those books. Now, these two books, this could even probably go for a little bit younger than three. Um, what Do People Do All Day by Richard Scarry and Cars, Trucks, and Things That Go. And let me just tell you, I probably have close to 20 Richard Scarry books. I actually have tons of book reviews on those, too. You can find if you go on my channel. But I really wanted to show you these on this video because I think they are great books for young children. Uh, the What Do People Do All Day is so informational. I, I just can't even tell you how much I love this book. Like, I'm trying to get to one of the pages, for instance. Okay, so like this one, Everyone's a Worker. And it's showing how um, former alfalfa planted a seed and he so he grew these plants and then he sold them to the grocer so then the grocer was able to buy from the tailor and the tailor was able to get you know so it goes on and on so how the money what's happening with the money from one person to the next and then grocer cat was able to buy mommy a new dress with the money he sold from what he got from the former you know oh this is awesome so building a house and it goes from the foundation like they're digging up to lay the foundation they're building the bricks they're um installing the water pipes okay they're putting in electricity they're putting on the walls of the house okay you see how de detailed this is how much information this is and it's so the pictures are so beautiful and colorful i mean what kid wouldn't, wouldn't want to sit here and read this this book even if you have a little bit older kids, I would give this, I would give this book. And then a mailing a letter. And I mean, it just goes on and on, okay? A ship voyage, um, a fireman's rescue. It even has like a baker. And where does paper come from in an airport? Do yourself a favor and get this book, okay? Cars, trucks, and things that go. Another great Richard Scary book, especially if you have young kids or it could be boys or girls. My girls love this book. But if they're into vehicles or any, you know, anything that goes and it shows, it's a, basically it's a storyline about the pig family. They're going on a picnic to the beach. Um, and it shows all kinds of different vehicles along the way. Some are silly. I'm trying to find a silly one, like a bug bus, you know, that's kind of silly. And then they have like a pencil car and, or like this, a hot dog car. Okay. But it shows so many different vehicles. It even shows like how a road's being made. I, I can't find the page, but this one's a train station, okay? And then they talk about the um, steam locomotive and then like the diesel locomotive, okay? So it's showing you different types of trains. Oh, this is some um, military vehicles. Just all kinds of different cars and trucks and... Oh, even the movers, even a movers fan. And on every page, you're supposed to find this little gold book. So it's kind of like a search and find too. It's a really cute book. I love it. So let's see what else. Oh, 
I really like these Elo Eloise Wilkins stories by Little Golden Books. This is a little collection of Little Golden Books. I love how colorful the pages are. It's very vintage, <laughs> but it's so cute. And um, it's like, there's several different stories. So like this one's, who, guess who lives here? Okay, so, and then it talks about the different people who live in the house and even like the mouse and the uh, robin uh, bird that lives outside the window and how the wind and the sun. And so that's one of the stories in here. And then this one talks about all the things that God gives us. Thank God is good and we're thankful for things he gives us. I'm trying to find another one that I really like. So there's some of these nature ones in here too, which I love. So it's talking about nature and all the birds around and the squirrels and the possums and I'm trying to find this one page that I thought was really cool in here. Show it to you real quick. Well, see, I'm trying to hurry up and find it and I can't. But anyway, so it's really cool. It shows you different fish and all that. So a bunch of cute stories in here. And this one's about, you know, the baby and stuff. I would say def mo little boys and little girls, but probably especially little girls would probably love this book. Highly recommend it. Okay, Martha and George. Have you ever read Martha and George? I remember Martha and George when I was little and this is the entire collection. This is all their books. It's the complete series about two best friends and Martha and George have all these little adventures and the pictures are very colorful and the stories are not long at all you're this is an easy book you can read several stories in one sitting easily martha and george just have all these different things they go do um like this one's about the movie um or sometimes they're mad at each other so when it shows them forgiving each other in the little story so tons of stories i can't remember how many stories are in this book um I don't know if it was, it says 35 stories in all. So 35 stories. Very cute. I think you would, your little kids would enjoy it. Okay, what else do we got? Oh, this is another one. A Tall Book of Nursery Tales. I mean, there's so many nursery tale books, but I really like this one. The pictures are really pretty. It is a little bit, some of the pages can be a little bit lengthy. So I think you could judge if you're three year old could sit through it but mine can actually it was probably two when we started reading it my second daughter so like i said very colorful bunch of classic fairy tales or nursery tales so i like that book too um more dr seuss put me in the zoo and the dr seuss abc so put me in the zoo is cute it's about an animal and he they don't want him at the zoo and he's showing all the cool things he can do with all his spots and to the little girl and the little boy and how he can do all these tricks with his spots and then they find Tom, you belong in the circus. Let's see if they film in the circus. Just a cute little read that I like. And this one's the ABC book. I like it because, you know, you're teaching your kids some of the letters and it's all silly, you know. You know how Dr. Seuss is. A bunch of it's silly and rhymy and cute so this one's all the letters okay so <clears throat> and then the other ones i'm going to show you are still about the same i would say you know three and older so i'm still on that this one is pretzel it's about a dog a boy and um a little a boy dog and he grows really long and he's trying to impress this girl that he really likes and she has nothing to do with him. And then one day she needs his help because she falls in a hole and he rescues her and then they fall in love. So just a cute little book about Pretzel the dog. Oh, and this one's actually, yep, the same, I knew that, a Margaret Ray. So same people that wrote Curious George, okay? No roses for Harry. You can tell this is an old book, but I know you can still get it because I've seen it recommended and other other people recommend it. So Harry doesn't want to wear this outfit that he has. So he runs off and he gets it, <laughs> runs off with it on and he gets all destroyed. And they're looking everywhere for it. 
And then he leads him to the tree, and look who has it in the tree. The bird. Isn't it cute? Coderoy. Now, this one's very, very, very well loved. Coderoy is a little stuffed bear that, that lives in a toy store or the toy uh, department of a big store. And a little girl wants him. And, but the mom says, oh, he doesn't even have his button. We don't want that. And so he goes around that night looking for his button. And he thinks the mattress has his button. And he yanks at it. And he gets put back in the toy department. So it's a cute little story. You just have to see how it ends. It has a very good ending. I'm just going to say that. So it's a cute little book about the little teddy bear. My kids really like that. Okay, so let me see. See, I, I'm gonna say these next couple books. I'm gonna say uh, a three-year-old that really likes to sit and read books would probably really enjoy these books. My three-year-old will sit through all of these books. But if your three-year-old doesn't really sit through books that well, then you might would say like four and older. So let me show you some of these. So The Giving Tree is, I, I call it a classic. Shel Silverstein, I really love his books. He has some good books and a lot of poetry. This one's kind of a heartstring puller, so it's about a tree and a boy, and she loves the boy, and she's always giving the boy things. Like she, when he's little, he climbs up the tree and sits in her shade and all that, and they love each other, her and the boy. But as the boy gets older, and like, let's see right here, he has a girlfriend, or he, um, I'm trying to see, he's, he's a man right here. So he needs the tree less and less, or he needs the tree for other things. He doesn't play in her all the time like he did when he was a little boy. And the tree is very giving. She gives him apples and she gives him her branches. And the story goes on until all that's left of her is a stump. So you have to kind of read it to see how the story ends. It is a sweet ending, but like I said, this is a heartstring puller. But I actually read this book to my five-year-old again this morning. And we've read this book again countless times. So many times we've read this book. Another book that my kids like is Stone Soup. And I know there's so many different versions of Stone Soup. This is the one we have by Marcia Brown. And they really like this book. Stone Soup, if you don't know the story, is about a traveler. Uh, or I say a group of travelers. They have different versions of how Stone Soup is written. But they don't have food and they're hungry and they get to a village. And the villagers don't want to share their food with them. So they trick them. They're like, oh, we have a stone and all we need is a pot of water. But then they keep adding stuff. Oh, you know what would really make Stone Soup good is if we had carrots or if we had potatoes or if we have this and that. And then soon all the people that didn't want to share their food with them in the village are all, oh, let me give you this and give you this. And I have meat and I have carrots and I have potatoes. And they end up making this great big feast. And the people are so excited. And they even give their, you know, their stone to the people. You Now you know how to make your own stone soup. You can make your own stone soup. And then they keep traveling on. So they really trick the people <laughs> into giving to cooking for them. But it's a cute story. Another one, uh, Mooncake. This one's about a cute little bear and a bird, but it's mostly about the bear. And he wants to, he wonders what the moon would taste like. They're looking at the moon. And so he decides he's going to, oh, well, he tries to catch the moon first to see what it tastes like. So like, let me see. Right here, he tries to shoot an arrow. I, I say an arrow, this moon, the spoon with an arrow, bow. And he tries to catch the moon, but of course he can't. So he decides he's going to build a rocket and the bird has to fly south for the winter during this time so while he's by himself he goes into the rocket but he falls asleep he's actually hibernating and he thinks he wakes up on the moon because he's never been awake during winter and it's all white and stuff so it's just snow obviously so he tastes the moon and he goes back to in the rocket and of course he falls back asleep again and when he wakes up the bird asks how did you ever get to taste the moon did you go and oh yes i went to the moon it's just a cute little story and so he, he really thinks he wants the moon, you know. This one, The Bird That Loved a Mountain. This one's a cute book. I really enjoyed this book. It's about a mountain that doesn't have anything on it. No animals live on it. No um, greenery. No water, nothing. And it acts as a bird flies there one day. And the mountain begs the bird to keep coming back every year. Because she's so lonely. And you have to read how... 
it happens but basically one day a bird brings a seed and drops it and things start to grow in the mountain and so the mountain's starting to not be so alone anymore because things start growing on the mountain and there's a river and now animals come and finally the bird comes and builds her nest there it's a very cute book and my daughter was about four when i started reading this motor one and she sits through the whole thing and you know in the whole sitting we just finished the book this is another book now they don't sell i don't think they sell this book anymore i think you'd have to find a used copy the medieval feast i cannot tell you enough about this book this author alakai i hope i'm saying it right she writes fantastic books so educational so informative uh since i've bought this book i have bought many of her books and i have many of her books on my wish list so it talks about a medieval feast basically the king writes one of the noblemen that he's going to be coming to their manor and they have to start preparing a feast and it goes into a lot of detail about what's involved in a feast during those days for the king and his court i think about it says like about 100 people are going to show up so he has all his um serfs and everything have to start preparing and it shows how like they're getting the king and queen's rooms ready and they're setting up they're going to be setting up tents outside for the other people that travel with the court how they have to hunt these animals and it even talks about how um i say the peasants and stuff were not allowed only the rich were allowed to hunt yeah and so you couldn't be caught killing animals on their property but it's just showing what I love about it is showing all the animals that they get. So it's telling you the names of everything. So it's very informative. And then even right here, like, so some more animals that they catch for the feast. And then right here, it's showing like different herbs and food that they grow in the garden. And it names all of them going around. Then, it, I mean, it goes on and on about different things they do. And then it's showing like their kitchen that they're preparing the food in. And that some of the different dishes that they're coming out with. And, I mean, look at this. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I'm going to say it's like a pastry, but it's, uh, yes, it's a molded pastry stuffed with meat, eggs, fruits, nuts, and, you know, whatever else, I guess. But look how elaborate that is. Isn't that so cool? And then it talks about the feast. And what goes on in there in the feast. Okay, so they're all there feasting. And how every time a new dish is brought out, someone, I think they blow like a horn. Yeah, they eat, and then it talks about how they eat until it got dark. So yeah, highly recommend this book if you can get your hands on a copy of this. So cool. I would say this book, my four-year-old, I mean, I'm sorry, my three-year-old will sit and listen to most of this book, but definitely about four or five and older. Actually, I think when I first got heard about it, it was recommended for probably like, I'm going to say a first to third grader or something like that, somewhere in that range. But my daughter really likes this book and we've read it several times. Okay, here's another series that, uh, and my three-year-old loves these too. I have all of them except one. There's 12 in the series. And this is Katie. Well, this one's Katie in the picture show. So it's a whole series of Katie's like adventures, like Katie and the British Artist. And what is so cool about these books, and a lot, most of the books, she's at an art gallery and she jumps into the painting and then things happen. And it tells you the, I'm trying to find a picture. Where was the, uh, yeah, so it's showing you like the art. And it will tell you the artist's name that painted that picture. And then in the back, it has all kind of information on the artist or let's say if they're, in a certain country or something it'll give you all kind of information about what you read in the book but it's a story and it's a story for young kids see like they're showing you different art and then every picture she goes in like these little adventures happen in these pictures things happen and she interacts with the characters so katie in the picture show like i said most of them are about her being in an art gallery not all of them are. So this one's Katie and the Spanish Princess. Katie and the Mona Lisa. Katie and the Sunflowers. And all, again, in the art uh, museum. And it tells you about all the artists. Now, this one's a little different. This one's Katie in Scotland, okay? So this one has Loch Ness Monster. And they go into different things in Scotland. So that's really cool because they're showing you 
you know, other parts of the world. Another one where they're going to be at the museum, Katie and the Sunbathers. Katie and the Dinosaurs. They're in a different museum. This time they're not in like an art museum. This one they're in a, a museum with dinosaurs in it. Um, so being that I have dinosaur lovers in this house, we have read this book. I can't even tell you how many times, probably 20 times or more. I don't even know. But it's a little adventure with these dinosaurs and it's naming some of the different dinosaurs in there and then when you get to the back it has the different dinosaurs that you talked about in there katie and the story night katie in london another one that i've had to read so many times i think they like it because they're riding on a lion in there but they're going to all these different sites in london and they're naming the different sites that they're going to so it's very informational and very good for little kids. Katie meets the Impressionist. And the only one I don't have is Katie and I think it's the Water Lily Pond. Yeah. So I only have one book in this series that I don't have that I want to get. Because I just love how much information is packed in these books. So that concludes all of my, um, I'm going to say, young readers picture books that I recommend. I have so, so, so many books. It's so hard to tell you just a couple of them. I mean, this video is already over 30 minutes long, but I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to try and link all of these books below where you can buy them. And I hope y'all check out some of my other videos because I'm actually going to do my favorite picture book, science books for young kids. And I'm going to link that below as well. So thank you for watching. Uh, check out my um, social media and subscribe to my channel and you can see more stuff that we do. Thank you for watching and have a blessed day.